Good afternoon or evening, fellow decoders out there around the world, wherever you are. My name is Logan, and this is Decode Your Reality. And today I have a very special guest that I'm going to be having the privilege to interview. My very special guest, TN, who is an advanced certified Akashic Records reader. What a title that is. And I know a lot of you that have been following this great research have been waiting for this interview. I've mentioned it many times on my presentations. So here we are. And uh, TN is, ha has become a very special and dear friend of mine because of our connections through, uh, through other friends. Uh, but, but TN is uh, in Los Angeles and she's originally from Bangkok and I'm going to give her the floor. But before I do that, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to give a strong introduction as to why not only is she supposed to be doing this great work, but how dialed in that TN is with the cards of illumination and her birthday and so on and so forth. So first off, ladies and gentlemen, TN was was uh, born into this world on March 8th. And of course, eight is the number of death and regeneration, which it it's encapsulates our eyes. Mm -hmm. It is the Akashic Records. And her birth card, which encapsulates March 8th, is the two spades card. And this card right here, when you flip it on its side, there's the infinity symbol. You can just place a number eight over there. And that, that uh, synchronizes with her March 8th birthday. The eight fits right over those two spades. This is card number 41. And why this is so special for Tien and her birthday is because the word Akashic comes from the word Akasha. And in numerology, through the English ordinal, that number, uh, that well, I'm sorry, that word Akasha equals the number 41, which matches her birth card. And, um, you know, the other synchronicity is that the 41st card in the deck of the medicine cards is the whale card. And this card right here is the card that is the keeper of all the Akashic records. The largest land animal or animal on earth, I shouldn't say land, but largest animal on earth, earth is the whale. And this animal is the keeper of the Akashic record. So how about that folks? 41 tied to her birth card, tied to March 8th and the infinity symbol. So that is how powerful this beautiful soul is on the world stage. And she's open for readings. I hope, I hope I'm not putting you on the spot TN, but I'm going to give you the floor. I know people really want to hear what you have to say. A lot of people have been antsy about knowing how to read the Akashic records, how to get in touch with somebody. There are a lot of Akashic records readers out there, but very unique you are. And let's start off uh, by, you know, where, where I said, you're from Bangkok, you live in LA. So I kind of gave that away, but I'm going to give you the floor and let you talk and kind of give you give us the rundown but you know the basic 101 to start off with on the akashic records so well thank you good. so much um logan for such a beautiful introduction and i really love about the whale you know i'm a quadruple pisces i have sun moon mercury and venus in pisces i'm very very loving that introduction about the whale and even funnier more like magical things that when i grow up grew up in thailand we have as a family my family always have this beautiful synchronicity with the number 14 you know like we often call it a lucky number in our family and i grew up in a home that is 49 slash 14 that's the house that i grew up in so so there's i love the synchronicity that's happening and that's really beautiful so now back to akashic records so as you mentioned the word akasha to dive in a little deeper it's a sanskrit word that essentially means primal substance basically um the the substance of where everything that come to an existence kind of the, the the beginning of a frequency per se you know and okay. and and in akashic records we believe i believe that the soul never our soul is eternal 
you know, we come here in this lifetime, we may come here to write different story about our life and do transformation about different past life in order to create more expansive and sometimes we go through our ups and downs, but at the end of the day, our soul is eternal. And Akashic Record is a celestial database of your soul, essentially like why you here, why you chose the parents you have. And what I find is the most beautiful about exploring Akashic Record is to be able to survey even your challenges in life why your soul at a higher self chose it to come here to experience it and to expand it. So in my opinion, none of us are victim. None of us are victim. Victim is basically a state of mind that a lot of people feed into. Sure, you can have pain. Sure, you can struggle and sure you can overcome that, you know, whatever happened to you. But essentially at the soul level, when you at this place in Akashic Record that calls zone of choice, when you gather with your master, teacher, and ancestor, and your higher self, say, you know what? I'm going to come back here on earth again to do some work. I'm going to come back on here on earth again. You know, in my past life, I have betrayed myself in some way. In this life, I'm going to do it differently. And to me, there is no victimization about that. That is some brave brave soul and i believe that we all are at, at the heart of hearts i really come here to expand our consciousness expand consciousness of ourselves as well as others so um another thing to the akashic record how to access akashic record um, I have my own method, method, method <laughs> my own method of how I go about it, how I was trained to do it. But Akashic records, you can access in so many ways through meditation. Some people do it through Reiki. To me, like the way you're doing it through cards, that's also a way of access, you know, part of the Akashic record. Because Akashic record would not be Akashic record without the knowledge, feeling, frequency of all humankind and all living being. You can access Akashic record of a tree, of a house, of a crystal, you know, any living being of your pet. And in order for us to have a deeper understanding, deeper appreciation, and a gateway to expansion of your soul journey. Nice. Well, that was a cer that was certainly a uh, strong introduction on what the Akashic Records is all about. Um, now I have a, you know, you know, we've had conversations. I have a different twist on it. I believe that we're, we're, yeah, we're all the architect here uh, being played out, but nonetheless, it still fits in the narrative of the Akashic Records because um, you are under the belief and the guys that we chose our path before we ended up coming down here. Can you kind of elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure. So in Akashic Record, the way I see it, there's two parts of Akashic Record. There's a blueprint. This is like the essence of who you are. It doesn't matter how many lifetimes you chose to come here, whether you chose to come here as a king, you chose to come here as a pharaoh, you chose to come here as a doctor. Essentially, that's the core string that's riding along all uh, this facet of your um, projection to the world. You know, for example, um, some people can have like a heart of a warrior so that they can, they brave, they come here to like help other and uh, whatever it may be that you can see throughout many lifetimes. So that is like the, the core of like what kind of turn you on essentially, like what, you know, like, you know, like get you excited. And then there's a chronicle of your soul. This is where the story that you come here to write. This is where free will coming in and have come to love free will. I used to think that free will is kind of almost, um, a pain in a way. It's like, oh my God, I have to make a choice. What if I make a wrong choice? And what if I make a right choice? And and wow, I think free will can be a beautiful thing if you look at it from a way that you can mold your story, you can change your story, you can get up and try again. So um, so in Akashic Record, in my perspective, there are two parts, like the essence of your soul and your desire as a soul to write a story that you come here to 
whatever it is and your connection to your each other and connection to the divine and how you want to go about you know arriving in that story that you come here to create awesome so okay so taking back to that so you are under the guise of writing out your story before actually incarnating into the avatar that I'm Logan and your TN and everybody else that's watching is inside their avatars. And then you are of the belief that you're playing out karma to wear off from past lives. Is that correct with the Akashic records? Yes. That's my personal belief. I believe that there, uh, I believe that there's a, uh, how how would I see it in Akashic Record is kind of almost you have an outline of the story that you want to write, you know, and when you ex come here on this earth experiencing as human, there are times that you forgot that story, you know, you live in the society that basically tell you to only follow, not to lead. You know, and if you go out of the box, you will get punished for it. So sometimes, you know, as a teen, as a young child, and you have to depend on your parents, some of those stories may be a bit of a struggle to kind of come to fruition. But as you get older, my hope is that we will come in marble and autonomy and start to have the remembrance of the story that we come here to write. However, I also believe that it's come as an outline, but through day to day, our interaction with our own self and interaction with others, we start to adjust kind of the story and the language and how we want to mold and change that story essentially to toward the ultimate goal of, you know, the books of life that you come here to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so do I, I think that there is a, a definite destiny, you know, because a lot of time people are afraid of free will because they, I mean, we can go back into like the Puritan way of thinking that there's only one way to heaven and there's hell and, and it's confined people to these boxes. And, and what's so beautiful, how, how I see in Akashic Record is that sure, your soul had this kind of destiny that kind of be ultimately turn you on the most. But at the end of the day, you can write your story and you can rewrite it and, you know, and it's never an ending to your beautiful narratives. Awesome. So, so the Akashic Records, as I know of them, in relation to the idea of the Akashic Records, they contain everything in the past that is being behind us that we've generated as a species, as a consciousness. And that, of course, is bottomless if you look at it that way, since yeah. we really don't know when our starting point was as a species known as the Homo sapiens and, uh, and, and whatnot. But um, can you touch a little bit more on that? Like, how does that, does that really affect the right now moment as we incarnate as a species? That's a very good question. So yes, it does, but it's also, it doesn't, it's fluid. So, um, so let's say, um, what would be a good example? Give me an example that you're curious about, and I can expand on that. Um, okay, well, since you asked that question, let's talk about astrology a little bit and the natal charts. Um, do you think perhaps the any anything that would stand out that's in relation that someone could look at in their natal chart with the Akashic Records? Like maybe like the North Node or something like that? Sure. Okay. That's, that's a, that's a good way of putting it. So I did actually, I did one time I have, I have this habit of connecting my own Akashic record while I'm taking a shower, because that to me is like, you know, again, water, Pisces, you know, and it's my kind of my, my own sanctuary in a way. So one time I did ask in my own Akashic record, what what is astrology? You know, what is the birth chart for? And they say that the birth chart is kind of almost a snapshot of what your soul is here 
to be, do, and become. However, but when it's this transit chart coming in, because planet always um, rotating around, transit chart come in to affect kind of almost like essence of those part of your chart, it be able to activate and also um, propel you to make different choices according to the environment for you to propel toward, you know, what your soul desire. So if we're talking about South Node, South Node in astrology is supposed to be about past life, also could be about thing that you come here that you are good at. You know, that's something that you come with a skill that is like, it's your dharma. To me, sometimes people look at, um, look at sound notes so negatively. It's like, oh, is that a thing that you need to move away from? Or is that this horrible part of your life? It's like, no, yeah. I think it's, to me, evolution. There's nothing good or bad about evolution. It just is. It's just a yeah. natural progress of thing. So when you see sound note, to me, it's like, you know what? I'm thankful for that past life. And I'm thankful also for what I'm good at that I can bring into the world and what I can use to propel toward my North Node, which is my Dharma. So Dharma may be something that you not, the road to get there may not be the most comfortable, but it will be the most fulfilling. So for example, I have um, South Node in Aries. So what, what, it, house, what house is that in? It's in my... 11th house. Oh, 11th house. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in my past life, I probably a leader of a group of sorts, you know, but I was probably more like leading from a kind of an old, um, an old way of leading, you know, more like rulership rather than, you know, um, and now, now my south node is Libra which is more like toward community, toward relation and toward things. So in my life, as I get older, I have come to learn to include other more, collaborate more instead of like, I'm going to do it all on my own, you know? So, so it's, it's part of, part of your evolution. So to me, that part of evolution, that is what I call chronicle of your soul. This is where you can write that story of your evolution to the part that you come here to reach. Nice, nice. Well, do you, so do you, since the Akashic kind of leads to the whale card and water and you have the three planets and water and whatnot, do you think four. that, oh, four, <laughs> four. Four, okay, four, Yeah. do you think that um, if you had like a trine in water or do you think it's very important to look at one's natal chart to see if there's any planets in Pisces and Scorpio and, you know, the water signs, do you think that's kind of important and anything in relation to our past lives and reincarnation with the water I signs? I would say, I don't know if I would say that Akashic record is water, earth, or air. I think it's all encompassing of things. But I would say, if we, you know, because often a question I get a lot from my client is like, what is my soul purpose? You know, and yeah. I think a beautiful way of looking at is like your south node and north node, you know, and and um, one of my teacher who I love and respect, um, Astro Twin, had mentioned that that's a beautiful way of, of kind of almost a hack into your North Node is to find a point in between. So for example, I have South Node in Aries and then my North Node is in Libra. The in-between point that will help me get to my North Node a little bit more at ease where you like, you know, you instead of like stepping from point one to point 20, I can step to point 10 first while like jumping on this rock and then go to this rock is cancer. So my point of be able to embrace that community more is for me to lean into kind of almost a nurturing aspect of myself, the aspect of like nurturing myself, nurturing others, kind of a mother <laughs> aspect of mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. And um and that how it's kind of almost like warm you up before you go to your north node. For, what, for example, what is your south node and your north node, Logan? My north node's in the second house. Uh -huh. And my south, of course, is in the eighth house. So, so what's 
Uh, second house, uh, I'm sorry, my north node is in uh, Sag. Am I want to say, am I in Sag? Uh-huh. Uh, in Sag. And then my, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. We'll just, we'll keep, keep talking. I mean, let me pull no. it up. I should, know All this, right. okay. I should know this off the top of my head and I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if it's Sag, then we know it's Gemini. No, it's, yeah, well, it's close. Cause I know my Gemini is in my seventh house, but it may encroach on my, my eighth ah, house. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever it is, the in-between point, just count one, two, three, and yeah. that would be it. So yeah. if it's Sag, it will be what? Uh, Sajna. I'll tell you right now. I can't even believe I don't remember this while being put on the spot. Uh, no, yeah, it's, I'm sorry. It's in Capricorn. Capricorn. So I have Capricorn and Cancer. Okay. Is, yeah, is my um, is my uh, my North and South node, which is interesting because the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn are the two main you know tropics that divide with the equator. Oh yeah. So, so, yeah. So it's it's kind of really interesting. So your your south node is in Capricorn. Your north node is in. No, my Cancer. south is in. No, my south is in Cancer, and my north is in Capricorn. Ah, okay. So your in between point is Libra. So you come here to be kind of someone who um, be able to find harmony and balance into things. That that's where before you be able to build empire like a Capricorn, you have to kind of almost coming out of that shell of protectiveness or like a, a clan-like mentality that cancer can have and go toward more like this community and openness and be able to listen to all sides of things before you can build your empire. That sounds about right. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is pretty cool. Right. Yeah. No, I, absolutely, man. You, you know how I feel about all this kind of stuff, you know? Um, how long, so how, I forgot to ask you, how long, have, well, I want to ask for the listeners, how long have you been reading um, the Akashic and how did you get started? How did you know that you were going to do this for a living? Um, well, it was kind of almost like a combination of kind of almost like this soul blueprint and also serendipity. So, I mean, growing up as a kid, my dad is a very devout Buddhist. I've probably been to every Buddhist temple in Thailand, like you name it. Like if it's in Bangkok, outside of Bangkok, I've probably been there. Probably most likely very few that I have not been to. So I grew up very, you know, know a lot about Buddhism, know a lot about how to make offering to the gods. But again, it doesn't come from a place of, it's, yes, it's come from a place of reverence, but it doesn't have that kind of personal spiritual relationship to it. It's more like this like God and man type situation. Right. But I always have this gift. I always love anything esoteric. I remember as a kid, it, as a little kid, I will hear sound. Like I would, I remember as a kid, I was just telling this same story to another podcast with Shaman Durek, is that I will have these stickers, the kind that kind of almost had a foam behind it, it's kind of raised, you know, you've seen them. It will be the back of my dad's car. And I remember as a little girl, I would play with it. I would remember pushing it and it will hear different angelic sound. And at the time as a kid, I thought there was some kind of magical toy that this like sticker, they push the buttons and I hear different sound. And eventually that sound stopped. And I think that kind of what happened to a lot of people once we go through the school system that is heavily programming you that you have to find one answer and everything is heavily math and heavily science only and anything creative is like, out the window yeah so eventually that sound stopped but that sixth sense still continue on i still see spirit i can still feel spirit and then in my teen year i start to um exploring tarot cards and numerology and all of those things and then as i go grew older 
um, I start to do tarot card for my friend in behind like the school bus, you know, the bus was traveling through Bangkok in this like smog filled Bangkok. I'd be like, um, you know, like doing tarot card for my friend in the school bus to, you know, kill times. And when it came to U.S., I start to explore Christianity. And that's where I gave up a lot of those things. I kind of just like put it aside because it's seen as, you know, like, evil from Satan, what have you. So I, I put that aside, kind of put that part of my um, curiosity with um, mysticism away, but I did explore Christianity and I have learned a great deal from it. There are many things about Christianity that I still love and have so much respect. And there are many things about Christianity that I feel that is deterred from what the original message was really meant to, which is all about love and grace, that what Christ is really all about, not about if you don't do this, you go to hell. If you, are you saved? Once you save, are you always saved? All oh, this, like, to me, is just like, nonsense so um so then eventually i found my own way back to my own mythicism i started to kind of come to see god differently come to see jesus differently come to see christianity differently and then i started to exploring again i start to kind of my friend talk about crystal and other things I'm, okay and i'm a and i'm a kind of an investigator type person i'm not the type that would just believe in something blindly i have to test it you know like i got myself crystal does it do anything for me and at first i didn't believe in it so it's like rock well, how would it do anything for you? And start to explore it and touch it and start to use it to channel and say, wow, it's really enhanced something, you know? And it could be placebo effect, but there are many things about crystal that I can just go on and on, I love. But that brought me to the point of, um, I moved into my own place here in Los Angeles during the time that it was a lot of transitional time for me. I got out from a really unhealthy relationship. I was in a workplace that was really discriminative, all kinds of things. It was just at a place that it was just really, a lot was coming up. And then we're just searching. I was just kind of like, you know what? I was like, you know, God, I'm, I'm ready to tap into this mythicism, this intuition that I had as a kid again. And then um, one of my friend, um, Chloe, who lived next door to me, and she just recently just moved from France and it was just a synchronicity. She's like, you know what? Since you're kind of exploring that again, and this was in 20... 20s, 14, I believe. So you've been, you've been on a rock. So you've been on, you've been on a, I mean, you and I, how, what did we meet like two years ago? What is it? We, we met like what, two years ago now? Something like that. Yeah, two years ago. So yeah, I think around like 2012 when thing really activated. So it's off for you, yeah. Yeah, when I told them like, I want to do this again. And the first hit that I had was like, I started to have vertigo. And it had ringing in the ear, which I still do. And it's, I think it's, you know, many people say it's ascension symptom. And I yeah, agree. I like, have it really bad. Yeah, and, and you know what? Yeah. It is what it is. But I remember that I was like, wait, what happened? And we had the first time when I was like, I'm ready. It was like I had vertigo for a week. It could not go to work. It was like the whole room was spinning. I think it's because... I was suppress it for quite some time. And then when it's come back, it's just like, yeah, and you reactivated it and then it started exactly, to exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and for those on the call on listening to this, if you ever have that kind of ascension symptom, you can always connect to your guy and tell them that, you know, please give it to me at the rate that my soul and my body is ready. Because, you know, our master teacher, they're like, oh, you ready? Full force? Yeah, coming to you. You know, they, <laughs> this is like, <laughs> so, so you can always talk to them and they will adjust it for you. For me, I and I found, um, I went to a ENT doctor, like one of the best in LA. And she's like, oh, basically she's like, you screwed. Nothing <laughs> you can do. But I end up like found a powerful acupuncturist that all has been helping me a lot. So it's eased the condition. So now back to that journey. So I, my friend told me about a crystal shop near me. And then I went online and I looked up and they, I just, you know, look at events and different things. And, and I found that they said, learn how to read Akashic records. I read about it. 
didn't even know how to pronounce Akashic. <laughs> but there was something inside of me saying that you need to learn how to do this. So I paid for it. You know, and I remember I was a little late to class and they said that at the bottom, if you late, you won't get in. I was a little late for class and I was like, gosh, should I go in? There was something in me that was like, oh, am I ready for this? You know, and a lot of people on the call probably have that too. It's like, oh, it's, it's basically to me, it's like you afraid to step into your power and that where I was, you know, so, like, you, oh, so you, so you, so you actually got educated on how to read Akashic records. There's actually yes. a school that you went to and yes. you, how long was the school for? Oh my goodness. It was, I think it was over the course of, I keep continuing studying it. So probably the course of four or five years, I probably spent over a hundred hour plus, plus, you know, like to study it. And I went through a Linda Howd Institute of Akashic Studies. So I studied from the beginning course, which, you know, was the course I'm talking about when I went to that storm, said, should I go in? And then the owner of the store was like, come on in. I was like, oh shit. You know, so I went in and was like, that was the end of it. So I, I beginning with and I was doing it for me actually. I didn't do it to like, oh, this is going to be my next career. Not at all. I was doing it for just to keep myself sane and want to explore and experience. So beginning advanced, um, and then I took healing in Akashic record, um, how to manifest in Akashic record, and then finding your soul path through Akashic record, which is like my favorite class. So, um, so yeah, I, I went as fast as I could. And now I'm in the process of becoming a teacher myself and also teach people how to read their own Akashic record. So I'm wow, very how exciting. How exciting. So I've been doing it how since exciting. 2014. I probably have read nearly a thousand Akashic records. Well, that's quite a, that's quite a bit of quite a bit of hours involved in the Akashic Records. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with TN, who is a certified advanced Akashic Records reader. And I know people are going to want to know how they can get a reading. For, are you doing readings right now? Or are you Yeah, I'm, do, I'm doing, doing like, reading right now. You know, um, my schedule is, you know, you know, busy, but they have a lot of, we have really good amount of opening right now. So yeah, I do readings. I do reading just like one-to-one. -one. I also recommend though to do work with me for a long term. I have a package of um, four sessions. You get a little bit of this power on it. And it's not really up to me. This is what how I'm going to put it. It's not really about me selling the package because to me, I can just get one-to-one -one session. I'm happy with that. But I see the result with one of my clients who she consistently coming to me now she had she was be able to manifest a home she now having sex with her husband again she be able to let go of some of the religious upbringings that kind of plaguing her of how she see herself so it's really about shifting of energy and that's take time you know it's not like yeah, yeah. a one time. Sure, like, I'm not saying that like one to one, one time deal, not gonna change your perspective how you see yourself, but it's more like kind of like a a snapshot of it, and to yeah. like continue changing that frequency. So yeah, so I do do that, and then um, and then we can probably are you gonna be writing down like at the bottom of the screen saying like websites and stuff, or should I just say it on here? Uh, no, you should probably, well, we're going to get into that in a second. So I can, we can ask you how people can get a hold of you and all that kind of sure, stuff. Of I, I had, a, I had, of course, had a reading done from you. And the only reason why I decided to come on and do this podcast with you is because I trust and I believe in what you, uh, what you show and what you, what you're able to do on uh, the Akashic records. I, th I think they're fascinating and they, you know, they tie my, my beliefs are a little different, but nonetheless, they still tie in very nicely wow. together in relation to, um, you know, having to play out your role and your script down here 
in the game of life. Um, so when somebody gets a reading from you, can, really quickly, like f like a basic overview, what is it you do? Yeah. And I'm sure people are going to want to know because, you, you know, you've got clients all around the world. I know because we did mine over the phone. You don't have to be in person to no. do what Akasha Gregor is reading, right? That's the beauty of it. So why don't you kind of take us through if someone wants to get a reading from you and what to expect? So what to expect is, you know, like I always send a form email, you know, to let people prepare themselves and good question to ask in Akashic Records and not question of like, will I be rich? You know, <laughs> maybe ask more questions to start with what, why, and how. Let's say what might be some, some of the stagnant energy that keeping me from my abundance, you know, like what a some of the past life karma that I come here to learn, you know, or, or why did I choose my parents? You know, all those kind of thing where it's, it's more, um, because to me, a lot of traditional typical psychic reading is kind of almost a quick fix for the anxiety. Like, you know, will this happen? When will it happen? You know, while, while I get information of when, and it's pretty accurate when they share it with me. But most of the time, it's really about us making choices in our lives to, you know, expand our consciousness and expand different choices that we come here to become. So, so when I open Akashic Record, all I need from you is your full legal name. And then I will go through something called um, Pathway Prayer, which is something that I learned from my study. And through that pathway prayer, then I get to kind of feel the vibration of the Kashic records. I sometimes will get, um, I either will get a visual vision and I'll share that with you. If I get message, which is tend to be the case now, now that I'm like more, more like have been diving deeper, more years into a Kashic record, I can just channel directly into my ear and out my mouth. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I do a little bit of like before that. Now I do a kind of a chakra balancing for us. And then before I tap in Akashic Record, I do that. And then if call for, I do a little bit of um, shamanistic healing that connect your heart to your mind, to your ego and realign everything. So if that come up, it's uh, that happened too. And by the end of the session, whatever question we're exploring and the story that coming through, I explore this process that um, Arthur Akashic Record Reader doesn't do it where I give you an opportunity to release the old story, the old chronicle of your soul that you no longer want. Like for example, say that um, you can say, um, I no longer want a toxic codependent relationship in my life. I release that into the light and you can say I replace it with a powerful collaborator, collaborative relationship that we like love, in, love each other individually, you know, as a soul, as a, you know, and be able to have a powerful collaborative relationship into the Akashic Records. Sure, so, sure, sure. so I do that process with client and I let my clients say that out loud because essentially it's your records not my records and the person i connect to is your master teacher and ancestor not mine and there's something really powerful about you connecting to your akashic record that way and kind of almost make a um, um decoration of what you want going forward so so it's it's a fascinating stories and some and i am the kind of reader that i just give it to you straight <laughs> Because to me, that less work for me, <laughs> you know, just like, I'm just yeah, going to yeah, channel sure. it and send it. And also had experience being scammed before by other mystic. And I'm not about to be that person. So, um, so I will give it to you straight. And I, I don't sugarcoat. Of course, you know, like I will, I will say it in a way that is, you know, like easy to understand, you know, and whatever they say it, I will say it to you, but I'll, I'll pretty much say it how it is. And, and sometimes certain truth can be a little hard to take for some, 
But to me, if you don't live in truth, you live in your illusion, then, then there's no liberation. Well, that's definitely very enticing, this information on the Akashic Records. And obviously, I know you're well-versed in what you do because I wouldn't have you on and all my followers and subscribers be subjected to your methodology if I didn't think you have something special. And it's just, you know, it's, it, to me, ladies and gentlemen, if you're interested in getting your Akashic Records reading, if you feel drawn to that, if you feel it in your gut instinct, Obviously, most of you know now, I say make the truth your own, and you must be like kind of a DJ and cherry pick, and life's a contradiction in my eyes, but nonetheless, if you feel drawn towards getting an Akashic Record reading done and finding out about perhaps who you were in some of your past lives, TN is the go-to person in my Rolodex anyway, and I've, TN, I've sent plenty of people your way, right? But I know, I, I I'm so thankful. Yeah. You Absolutely. are so amazing. No, absolutely. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're in, if you resonate with this message, if you're, if you feel like you want to get your, if you want to know, cause I know a lot of you want to, um, I'm going to ask TN now to deliver and I'll put these on the screen when we do this in a post edit. Um, what, how can people get a hold of you? The best, very best way setting an appointment and how long does the Akashic record reading take when somebody books with you? <laughs> It's about an hour, 15 minutes, you know, and, and now in the past, I used to do a 30 minutes reading and sometimes I still do that for return client, but for the first session, it's, it's so much information and your master teacher and ancestor are so excited to meet you. And I just don't like limiting myself to 30 minutes because it's just, it's kind of almost too much to put all of that in such a small amount of time. So it's an hour, roughly an hour, 15 minutes, depending, you know, it's just depending how things flow. And, um, so yeah, that, that's, that's about the time that we will be diving into your Akashic record and you'll be surprised before you know it. It's like, oh, Tom's is up because- Yeah, it always flies by. It's always so much coming through and, and it's always to me just so much fun. I just yeah. love doing it and it's just love to see, wow, you know, like this person was from this place in their life, whether in this life or past life, and they chose to be here, and this is where they're at, and where they want to go, and where they're going. It's just, it's like, to me, it's like watching a beautiful movie, you know? Yeah, now it's the same thing for me. Absolutely. When mm -hmm. I do readings for people, it's awesome to give them the keys to their kingdom and watch them take off, and then you hear the success stories of uh, people that you know, are, uh, have a brand new life, you know, yeah. a new set of tools and, and, and a new blueprint to have fun with. Uh, like I say, a shiny new toy. To exactly. Get to play around with. Exactly. So it's really and nice. It's about helping people remember who they are. And once they remember who they are, they no longer feel lost. And when you no longer feel lost, you finally be able to drive that car that you have or that boat that you have in full power because you no longer like don't know where you're going. And it's all about coming to accept all that you are, like part of you that you love. And you know, we can talk about that too, of how people often don't celebrate the part that they're good at because they try to stay humble. And yeah. then they beat the shit out of themselves on the part that they're not proud of, which is the part that they're supposed to accept in order to dive into unconditional love for themselves, work through that shadow to go into the light. And the part that they're supposed to be humble is, uh, to me, the only person that you should be humble for and toward is the divine. Because, and not humble in a way that you're afraid of him, but humble in a way that I can always learn and expand. To other human beings, own your power, because there is no one person exactly like you. Uh, amen to that, for sure. So, so awesome. you can reach me on uh, my website. That would be the best way to reach me. What's your website? This is www Tian Sirin, which is my full legal name, T I E N S I R S Orion I 
and nsandnancy.com. Yeah, I'll just, I'll be putting up, I'll put that up on the screen and I'll leave it in the description and the links down below anyway. So you, if you're, if you're interested in getting a reading with TN, ladies and gentlemen, just look down in the description of this video and the link will be there. You can just copy and paste or tap on her uh, website and go right there and book there and all that kind of stuff. And I'm excited because I know you're going to get some clientele from this because I know some people have been waiting for this interview and wanting to read. I've had countless emails of people that, you know, that reached out and, and when I mentioned your name yeah. and they want to check it out. And, you know, uh, I mean, I was fascinated by when I got my reading and all the stuff that you told me who I was in my past. So I know kinda... that was, that was fun. We're like, Ooh, okay. And then to see how it's correlating to your current life is even more fascinating because oftentimes there's, um, that because, you know, in, in Akashic record, karma doesn't belong to that. You don't owe a karmic debt to someone. Karma belongs to self. Like whatever hangs up or whatever celebration that you may have from your past life, you bring that into this life for you to change it, transmute it, and expand. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun to look at your, your Akashic record and it was just, you know, a fun ride to see who you become and all of that. So. Yeah. Well, another another layer of becoming a better version of yourself, ladies and gentlemen, if you're interested, reach out to TN. TN, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you for sharing your gifts and your mind and, you know, what you came here to do. I love seeing people that are literally living out their true selves, their true blueprint, where they wake up every day and they just can't wait to get out of bed and start their day and help people on this journey and that's what you're all about and that's why likewise. you and i resonate and in I, so many I, other ways than that but yeah you know, yeah so, likewise and i love what you do and you are like a master at what you do so it's my thank honor you, thank to you. share this space with you as well oh thank you i appreciate that so ladies and gentlemen if you resonate with this message and you feel you want to get a akashic records reading look in the description of the video i'm going to leave those there once again and Tien, do you have anything else that you want to share before we end this transmission? I'm trying to keep these short because people's attention spans are not really as long as they'd <laughs> like them to be. Exactly. So. No, I think I think we cover everything that I feel called to share. And it's just such a wonderful to connect with you again and be able to share um, my gift and my passion with everyone. Yeah. Well, that's the name of the game is, you know, when you come to TN and you get an Akashic record reading, if you decide you resonate with this message, you know, you're getting somebody that's authentic. That's number one. And number two, you know that she was born to do that, mm -hmm. you know, and so I, I feel that that combination when I see that in readings, when I do readings for people and I see what they're really built to do. And then they just give themselves permission to do it, which, you know, you went on that wild ride with your story of going and living in Bangkok and going to all the temples and then going into Christianity and then hanging up the, the mystical side and then bringing it back in. And now you've forged your own path, yeah. which, you know, you've become your own snowflake. And that's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. It's becoming a DJ and cherry picking, even though that mm -hmm. contradiction in my beliefs anyways, were being used. But nonetheless, we are literally using ourselves through the uh, architect. The architect's using us. We're using the architect. It's kind of a, a two-way exactly. street. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun. Like life eggs, once you chicken, or chicken or eggs, you know. <laughs> so. yeah, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, exactly. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm so honored and happy that we have completed this transmission. And I know we'll probably end up meeting up again. Uh, so, Tian, thank you so very much. I'm very grateful. And uh, until next time, we're going to have you back on probably again. I don't know when, but I'm sure. And ladies and gentlemen, that's all we got for today. My name is Logan. My very special guest, Tian, the Advanced Certified Akashic Record Reading. My name is Logan. This is Deco Giriaudi. I thank each and every one of you for your support, your Patreons, your donations. My name is Logan again. This is Decoder Reality. Thank you very much for watching.